Assalamu alaikum, I'm Iman Saddam and this is Gossip on Dops TV. I'm here with my great friends Sue, Aliza and Tisha and we are speaking today about sin and um, when sin becomes harf harmful to um, the community at large and do people have to be held accountable and how, how do we hold them accountable? Yeah, so I wanted to go back on what Tisha said about, you know, like how some people, they were just like, they, they don't want to, they think that they're exposing someone's sin by, you know, saying it um, out loud to the community. And I feel like it's such a fine line because, you know, I feel like when things become, uh, you know, there's abuse that gets involved or, you know, something's dangerous, you know, something's dangerous uh, is happening and the community decides to stay quiet about it because they're scared that they're going to backbite and they don't want to expose anyone's sin. I just feel like that's just, um, it's such a controversy. I, I just wanted to mention that, I mean, in terms of backbiting, there's several, you know, conditions where you can backbite and this is actually one of them. I mean, there's others, you know, when people get married, when you're in the court of law, but this is definitely one of them. When it becomes harmful to others, you're supposed to speak out on it. It's, it's, it's like, the reverse, it's a sin to keep it to yourself because there's other people who are going to be hurt in the end. You know, we want to also be very careful that, you know, this person is someone who has already rectified themselves as well. Right. I'm not saying that, I mean, you can't take anything from them because I believe that Allah can, you know, remind you in many different ways through different people, whether they're Muslim or not. But the thing is, is that when it's a religious um, leader or spiritual leader in any community, exactly. actually, it, it's just like you, you, you have, there, there, become, there comes this trust factor, right? Right? Yeah. Can we forgive? What, what, how do we move on after the harm has already been yeah, done? Yeah, I mean, I don't think forgiveness means, okay, I'm going to trust that person and, you know, I'm going to start listening to them again. You can forgive very, I think, forgiveness should come very easily, even though it might feel like it's a difficult thing to do. Because at the end of the day, I mean, for me especially, I always remind myself that I am a sinner and I want Allah to forgive me. So who am I to hold that forgiveness from someone else? Does that mean that now I'm going to keep going to this person's classes or there there's a you know you get jaded a bit. So how do you move on from that? And when it's on such a large scale, how does that community begin to rebuild their trust not just in that person but in all the other speakers that we um, look up to and, and um, admire. You know what I feel about this is that the forgiveness is actually for the akhirah. It's to make sure that that person isn't held back in the akhirah and also that we're not held back in the akhirah. But the, what you're talking about, having the processes, so we, we forgive for the akhirah and then we take the, the correct processing and the correct exactly, measures yeah. in the dunya. There is a due process in Islam that it depends on the level of um, you know, level of harm as well. You know, you, you go through the Sharia, you find the correct, um, you know, Sharia lawyers or whatever it might be, other scholars who come in and investigate, and then you figure out that level of harm, should it be kept within the masjid? Or does it have to be announced widely? And I think how widely it gets announced depends on the sphere of influence of the person being accused. Because there are some things that can be dealt in the small community, like, like what you were saying. There are others that need to be announced worldwide just because this person has that much influence. We have to actually somewhat um, purify our intentions, I guess, in seeking that knowledge because um, there is somewhat of, of an obsession that takes place and whether it is our fault or is it the teacher's fault, actually. Um, it's, it's how we perceive um, a sort of someone who is in a position to influence. So whether we actually created that nature or culture, we have to check if if we are seeking the right method of learning, um, because there's a lot of things which maybe we're sort of responsible as well, you know, um, looking out or rather looking beyond their mistakes. But in fact, there's a lot of things that we have to correct within because there is a hikmah, there is a wisdom behind all this that's happened, you know, just to check whether you're really going in there to learn proper knowledge. Um, are you really putting the teacher at his place or are you um, now lifting him higher than what you need to, you know? 
Um, just in closing up, there, we can talk about this forever, and we will definitely not come to um, a solution. Yeah, a solution or even an agreement. Uh, it's an ongoing subject, and I think that it's really important that we start talking about it openly. Um, we, a lot of us, are hurt by the things that we found out as a community, and I think y what we need to keep in mind is that yes, um, humans, whether they're scholars, muftis, whatever they are, still are not perfect. They are infallible. Um, yet the religion of Islam is perfect, yeah. and the Prophet Muhammad and his Sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are perfect, and that's who we look to. Um, you know, that's who we try to emulate. So, um, you know, again, just wrapping it up, um, it's for those who have been affected or are affected, I think the important thing is to seek out uh, someone you trust, a counselor, um, a parent. Um, and I also feel like it's really important not to stay quiet about it. Yeah. I really feel strongly that we create awareness, uh, not for ourselves, but to also the pride in Islam. That you know what we, when something is wrong, address we don't. Yeah, yeah, we address it. Alhamdulillah, I'm so glad that we all got a chance to you know discuss this because it's important. To, it is to, important. To, yeah. To voice out you know how we feel and everything, and hopefully you all are able to have these conversations as well. But for today, again, this topic that we had today was on the idolization of um, public figures, basically, um, but sp uh, more specifically, spiritual public figures. Um, and I hope that we are going to move on as a world, as a community, through whatever is happening right now. And it's um, important, sorry to cut you off, to recognize those who have been hurt by this, the victims. I think they um, get brushed aside, they are, you know, uh, left in the dark, and yeah. they're the ones who need us more than you know the spiritual leaders. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. this is the other the other part of the processing that we need to look at. But yes. So today we are out of time. Out of time. Even though we'd love to keep talking, but we are out of time. So um, I'm Aliza Kim. This is Sulim. Mm -hmm. Also Tisha yeah. Zainal and yeah. Iman Salam. And we'd like to thank you for watching this episode of Gossip on Dops TV. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Did you guys enjoy that? Because we definitely enjoyed our discussion. And if you like more, tune in to Go Set. Only, Only on, on Dops TV. TV.